Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College, and today we're going to talk about data in games, specifically about big data, large amounts of data in a game like an MMORPG, something where you've got hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of entries of different types of things. Maybe it's items that you can collect in World of Warcraft or quests that you can get in EverQuest or whatever it is. It's going to be a large chunk of data, and you're going to have a whole ton of it in these kinds of projects. So how do you deal with that? Now I've seen a couple different solutions in the past. I've seen ones where things kind of get pulled in from the database as needed. I've seen other ones where everything is just loaded in to a binary file that's shoved into memory and then everything's accessed through there. And um, they all tend to follow a semi-similar pattern to different degrees of goodness, I'd say. So I want to go over the pattern that I usually see done here and then the way to make it as ideal or optimal as possible. So here I've got this empty little project where we just have a class file in it and we're just going to go right into this file. So if you look here, we've got a static data access class and the way that this usually tends to work and like I said, I've seen this in many, many games, it's almost always about the same. There's some static class that's holding all of this data and then other parts of the code base just kind of call into it and get the object back out. Now, it's not always done exactly like this. Sometimes all of the data is just loaded on startup and then it's filled into some objects and then read as needed. Other times it can just be you know, read from the database as needed and not just always cached. Personally, what, what I like to do and what I've seen works best is to just pull in all of the data from whatever the source that you have is. So if it's a database, you know, read that entire database into memory. And now we're not talking about player info or um, you know, basically persistence type stuff. We don't care about the, the characters and the items. We care about is the content related data here. And that's what we want to pull in. That's always going to stay a relatively static size. And realistically, it's never going to be too huge unless there's something really weird going on in the data in the database, it's not going to be that giant. It's going to be big enough to fit into memory pretty easily. So what what I like to say, or what I like to see, is pulling all of these tables or memcache entries or XML data all into objects in memory and then caching them by an ID. So just like if we're in a SQL Server or any other database with a primary key ID to look things up, we're doing the same thing here. We just generally do it with a dictionary. So I'll load in in this example, we'd uh, load in all of the items and we'd fill that into a dictionary that had the keys and the types. So here would be items as load item from data source. And then here, just imagine that we're actually doing the, the data query, whether it's a SQL select, if it's for SQL database, or reading from a binary file, if it's in like a, a .bin file that, where you've got all this stuff kind of nicely compressed in there, or reading ideally from a memcache something like Redis or memcached, where you're just kind of able to pull it in and it's all stored right there on that box and it's extremely fast. Definitely the way that I would recommend doing it. So let me just kind of dive a little bit more into how this works though. So imagine we've got our data access class here. We've started up our server and it's gone through, it's loaded everything up. And then we, oh, let's say we kill an NPC and we need to spawn an item for that NPC to go into their loot or something. Well, in that case, what we would do is the NPC wouldn't already have a reference to any items. Instead, it'd probably have a list of items that it could spawn, and those would just be referenced by ID. So we'd, again, use an integer ID. Sometimes it's a string ID. I really prefer to use integer ones, but we'll get it by the ID and then just return the thing back out and return null if it's null. So here we just like you'd see, for instance, in a loot thing, it'd be like a data access dot get item and we'd pass in the ID and we'd get the item back. And then what we would need to do though is make sure that we deal with null returns. So if we try to get an item, that item doesn't exist for some reason, we obviously have to handle that in our other code. We generally don't do that in the data access. You could, I've seen people do that where they'll just kind of return back a default item. But in my experience, that's not really the best thing. It's a nice kind of catch all. So that way, if something does blow up, you, know, you don't actually get an issue. People get a cloth cap or whatever the hell the, the missing item is. But 
I really prefer to just keep the code nice and stable and have it just check. So if I'm getting an item, I always check to make sure that I actually got back an item. Now you might wonder like, well, why the hell would you get back a, a null entry? Why wouldn't the item be there? And there's a very good reason for it. And it's because when you use a system like this, you can give the design team or your engineering team, basically everybody, the ability to live update the data. So they can reload you know, different chunks of data, maybe even reload a specific item, and then have that data all replace what's in the dictionary, or just maybe it's a single entry, replace that single entry in the dictionary, and then we don't need to do anything else for our server, because as long as the code is constantly looking into this dictionary and only ever referencing things by ID, then every time we need to get the item, you know, if it's not there, it's not there, it's not there, and then we added it, it'll be there when we actually query for it and, and it's added. This also allows us to just kind of design or redesign and change things up pretty easily because I don't have item references anywhere in the code really. Like we're not, we wouldn't be storing an item reference on the NPC or on the player or anything else. We can just store those IDs. So we can again add things, redesign things, change things. Um, but most importantly, we can hotfix. Right? If we have a system like this, we can hotfix without taking down our servers at all. So we can just go in, change the item or the ability or whatever whatever the thing is that needs to change. We can go in, change that, run a little command and have it force reload it, or we can even have it so that our system automatically reloads as we change data. Now that's not something I would generally wanna do. Uh, maybe in a really development environment, in a production environment, I think you wanna have some kind of gate there to make sure that you're not accidentally doing that. But you do get that capability, just that functionality of going in there and saying, hey, this item isn't quite right. We don't have to do a patch. We don't have to go kind of dive in, do a new build. We don't have to do any of that stuff. We just update the entry in whatever our data source is and then force that item or that, that entry or that table to completely reload. Now this does kind of fall apart when you're using a binary file. So if you want to use a binary file for your memory or for your items, you'd actually have to patch that file out to all of the servers and then have it reload. So that's one of the reasons that I don't generally prefer that method and I really ideally would go with a memcache type system. So then I can just go change it in the database, memcache updates, and then the server updates shortly after. Ideally with little to no user or human intervention. Definitely with no engineering intervention. It should be something that and designers and producers can go in and deal with. So I think that this is a, a pretty standard system. Like I said, I've seen it in a ton of different games, uh, mostly MMOs, but a couple other things. And I just, I really like it. I, I find it to be a lot more useful. I don't end up with these null lingering references to objects anymore, because I'm always just constantly pulling the thing out of the dictionary, which is nice and fast. So it's not like it's a performance problem. Anyway, my dogs are barking, so I'm going to have to end this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I think that's it. Bye.